There were also links with cloud seeding. Now, uh, that's probably a bit of misinformation going on there. Cloud seeding, if we don't know what it is, that's when uh, substances are dispersed into the air to cause rainfall. And Dubai have been doing that in recent years for their very dry areas to, to um, help that. But it... I don't think it's linked to that because there's no way it could be that extreme. And also, this was well forecast, so we know uh, we knew it was going to happen, and so they, it would be a bit odd to do that. And also very costly. It's a very costly thing. And Dubai has seen some of its most extraordinary weather for decades this week. I don't know if this is actually taken from Dubai, but it might just be indicative of rain generally. Ten inches of rain was recorded in just a day in the UAE, with Dubai usually receiving just 3.9 inches in an entire year on average. That's the three time, nearly three times the yearly amount in one day. Travel chaos continues at Dubai International Airport, with over 300 flights cancelled out of the world's second busiest hub. You might have seen the pictures of planes taxiing through a lake of water where the runways should be. People who go on holiday to Dubai, hard to sympathise with them, but they were, anyway, we should do. <laughs> Let's speak now to the meteorologist Nazanin Gaffer. Morning to you. Good morning. Yeah, a friend, actually my neighbour, is stuck there. Oh. Uh, cannot get back home uh, It's because the airport was inundated with uh, so much rain. The whole of Dubai, pretty much. As you said. They're, they're not, presumably they're not actually equipped to deal with this amount of rain because it doesn't happen. No, I, I don't think, yeah, it, it's known for being dry. It's a desert area. Of course, they don't have much rainfall. As you mentioned, the annual average for Dubai is 97 millimetres. I mean, Scotland gets more than that in a month, most months. And uh, April, they they usually have eight millimetres of rainfall. Now, it's not unusual for them to have heavy, thundery downpours during the winter period. That does happen, but not to this extremity. Uh, it's the first biggest storm in 75 years there. And it was well forecast for over a week globally by meteorologists. So they knew it was going to happen. They knew it's going to be over a year's worth of rainfall in just 24 hours. And over that, in fact, for Al Ain, where they had 256 millimetres of rainfall, so almost three times the amount for the year in just 24 hours. And do we know what's causing it? I mean, this has a whiff of climate change about it, something this extreme. It's a single weather event, and weather events have always happened throughout human history, but there's a feel that things could be exacerbated by climate change in this area. Yeah, well, in, in this particular instance, it was due to a cut-off low-pressure system. Now, low-pressure systems are stormy systems. They bring heavy rain, but it was a cut-off one which stopped other weather systems developing, blocking them, and therefore lots of warmth and moisture went up into the air. Heavy rainfall was caused. Cause. Now, is that directly linked to climate change? We don't know yet, but it's um, no coincidence, really. As the global temperature increases by every degree, the atmosphere holds 7% more moisture. So I wouldn't be surprised if it is to do with that. And we see storms like this in Dubai more often. Uh, and Therefore, it is going to be a massive issue in the future. And they're going to have to learn to adapt this because, you know, when we think of climate change, we, we think of extreme heat and everything drying out. But we've also seen this winter in Britain loads of rain falling and a ridiculous amount of rain falling. I wonder whether part of the way of living with this in the future is we're going to have to learn how to deal with vast outpourings of rain and, and store it better and channel it better because it's, it's good, valuable resource, but it comes in the wrong place at the wrong time in too much amounts. There's got to be something we can think about in that area. Yeah, there perhaps. probably will be, have to be adaptations because the way we're going, it doesn't look like making much of a change in our lifestyle is going to make much of an impact. Obviously, I'm not saying not to because we should do, but I think there's going to have to be some adaptations there. But there were also links with cloud seeding. Now, uh, that's probably a bit of misinformation going on there. Cloud seeding, if we don't know what it is, that's when uh, substances are dispersed into the air to cause rainfall. And Dubai have been doing that in recent years for their very dry areas to to um, help that but it I don't think it's linked to that because there's no way it could be that extreme and also this was well forecast so we know uh, we knew it was going to happen and so they would be a bit odd to do that and also very costly it's a very costly thing and China's been doing it for years they did it in 2008 for the opening ceremony of the Olympics they actually stopped it from raining so they could have the firework display I remember, oh, I remember that uh, mm. another thing, great to speak to you completely though. normal behaviour yeah, I know uh, <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Nazanin. Great stuff. She is Nazanin Gaffer there, who's a meteorologist. I've just realised, actually, that my poor mum, who's in Pakistan right now, that she goes via Dubai. Does so she? I'm rather hoping that... that oh, yeah, the storm conditions yet. are actually heading that way, I'm afraid. Oh, OK. <laughs> She could have cheered you up there, but she... she <laughs> Sorry, but sunshine for the UK. Well, <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. Right. And 20 people have died in the flash flooding across the Gulf states after record rainfall. 
18 months of rain fell in just one day in the UAE, flooding homes and streets in Dubai and disrupting flights at the world's second busiest airport. Now, storms like this are becoming more frequent in the area. Uh, many scientists are attributing it to climate change, not surprisingly, and the practice of cloud seeding. Now, Jim Dale is a meteorologist well known to listeners of this programme and author of Surviving Extreme Weather. Um, Jim, what is cloud seeding? Good afternoon, ladies. Um, first of all, well done for getting hold of this one, because sometimes these sort of stories that happen some distance away don't get the airtime they deserve. So you're doing that. So well done. Uh, cloud seeding. It's when um, this is kind of it's, it's kind of old practice, but it's got a little bit better of late. It's when it, when aircraft go into the sky and they drop a nuclei, normally silver um, iodide, something of that nature it may have changed of late, different chemicals anyway, to, pr to provide a nuclei for the raindrops to form. You've got to have the right synoptic situation. You've got to have low pressure there and the potential for, for uh, raindrops to form. You can't just do it into a blue sky. It wouldn't work. Um, so I think there was an inkling that this might actually do something. And apparently there was jets in the, in the sky doing this. But I think that's a bit of a red herring, if I may say. Uh, I'll give you the story in terms of what I think happened, and that is the Arabian Sea, which is to the south of these locations, very humid and warm, <clears throat> probably near to record warmth uh, in terms of the general sort of picture there. Now, cold air coming across the desert, that sounds a bit unusual, but a northerly, they both met, This these two airstreams met, and when you get that convergence, you end up with the area of low pressure deepening, and then subsequently you get what we call cumulonimbus clouds. Those are thunder clouds. And anybody who's seen the social media, you'll see that the lightning was spectacular over Dubai. Um, and this was very slow moving. One of the reasons why there was so much rainfall falling when you get these kind of events. But you've already said it. Um, the energy in the atmosphere, the energy in the oceans is resulting in experiences like this. Um, becoming, uh, let's just say, a lot steeper, a lot deeper and a lot darker. Yeah. And yeah, 20 people dead, as we know at this moment in time. Yeah, I mean, it's grim stuff, actually. And I'm sure, like us, uh, Jim, you've been looking at the footage and you've got shopping malls absolutely awash and Rolls, oh, yeah. Rolls Royces trapped in streets that are, are completely flooded. Doesn't, um, doesn't that bring it home when the Rolls Royces and the Ferraris get taken away by by, by the rain and uh, and and the floods? It's It really brings it home that we... We've we've talked before many times in terms of of um, extreme weather that's been going on, and and I get I guess as we go forward we'll speak again, uh, but yeah, it makes us look very small, doesn't it? And that's what climate is. It's much bigger than ourselves. Weather's bigger than ourselves per se, but you put the cl the, the extremes in there and the ramping of the energy. Um, you end up with situations like this and it, it doesn't pick and choose. It goes where, you know, these these things occur where they occur. And if it occurs over a major city such as Dubai uh, or into Oman, for example, then, yeah. And these are desert states. Uh, you've mentioned the amount of rainfall that's fallen and, and to get something like a year to a year and a half worth of rain within a, a small period of time, 24, 36, 48 hours, because this sort of thing started on Sunday, um, it's 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 unprecedented for those areas, and we're seeing that unprecedented experiences uh, happening in different ways, whether it be floods, wildfires, um, scorching temperatures, you name it, uh, that they're, they're happening, and they, they might not make the UK news very often, um, which is why I'm glad you're actually airing this. It's really good, um, but believe me, I look at these things virtually every day, and they are happening left, right and centre around the world, uh, perhaps not ourselves in our cool, cool, showery bit at this moment in time. No, I'm just looking out and, no, I can't see anything dangerous heading our way. Um, Jim, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Jim Dale, uh, meteorologist and author of Surviving Extreme Weather.